Hey guys, sometimes freezing motion in photography is sometimes our highest priority. So let's figure out what choice we would select for that. All right? Click, 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 click and a picket. Click, 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 click and a picket. Click, 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 click and a picket. Click, click, click. So the mode I'm referring to is called shutter priority. Now shutter priority is a mode on your camera, on the dial, and it's either going to be an S or it's going to be a TV, and the TV stands for time value, okay? Now, what you do is you tell the camera, I want a shutter speed of 1 500th of a second. And what it will do is it will compensate the aperture. It will open and close the aperture to let in the amount of light for the shutter speed that you've chosen. It'll try to pick the best value. Now, you also have the option of controlling the ISO manually. You can do it in auto, which I suggest if you're not familiar with what ISO to choose, or um, you could do it on your own, okay? So when is shutter priority most used? It's most used for sports and action photography. So to you, the most important thing is catching somebody running, getting the shot of somebody catching a ball, a bird in flight, wildlife photography. Those are the most important things. You're not as concerned about if everything's in focus in the back or if it's blurred out. You want to freeze the motion of the shot. You want to be able to see that bird as crisp and as clear as you can flying through the air. You're not concerned about the background. And so that is typically where we would use shutter priority. Okay, so we have a general rule. Now, the general rule is that your focal length times one or one one hundred, whichever is greater. That would be your minimum shutter speed. And for a crop sensor, you want to do that times 1.5. Now, another thing that we might want to do in using shutter priority is we want to say uh, capture slow moving water or we want to freeze the motion of water then our shutter speeds would be really really slow because we want to let in as much available light because we want that blur of the of the water or we could freeze the water the motion of it and catch every little drop and then we want a very very fast shutter speed so those are a couple examples where we would use um, use that okay all right so i'm going to give you some baseline numbers to start with if you're not familiar with uh, shooting in shutter priority and these will give you uh, a general idea of where to start with okay so if you're planning on shooting uh, say birds in flight i would start at one two thousandth of a shutter speed and for action sports i would go at one five thousandth down to one one thousandth for street photography i would start at one five hundredth and go down to one two fiftieth of a second. For landscapes, I would go at one one twenty fifth down to one quarter. Now, for panning cars, say you want to take a shot of the car and you want to blur the background. So I would go from one fifteenth down to one sixty one one sixtieth of a second. And for waterfalls, I would go uh, one eighth down to two seconds for blurring water 0.5 of a second down to five seconds so that would really be slow and then for fireworks average two to four seconds long for stars at night 15 to 25 seconds and for star trails 15 minutes minimum up all right so then the last thing what to do with ISO well, what I like to do is go into a venue, put it into auto ISO, let the camera tell you where the best ISO is for the averaged baseline exposure, and that will give you your starting base. And if you're indoors, usually you can pick an ISO that is constant once you know a good baseline. So take some shots, does it look good? Okay, maybe I'll just leave my ISO here and I won't let the camera keep bouncing the ISO around. But here's where you run into problems. If you're zooming in and you're changing your focus, what happens is 
a lot of times your your camera will see a bunch of bodies more of a, of a darker image and if your ISO is set to the lights where the whole room is a lot brighter and it's not focused on a darker image then chances are you can lose that shot so that's where I tell people run an auto as much as you can you'll consistently get more shots and that's my best advice okay so start out at auto ISO if, if you're in a room with constant lighting um, or the outside light is really good then you can pull it out and, and use your own discrepancy. All right, those are my thoughts. So every shooting mode has its own positives and negatives, and the best way to find out what those are is to just start shooting. Shooting in different situations, different lightings, um, and, and shoot action, things that are still, and you'll, you'll get an idea of what the limits are for your camera, what the limits are for your lenses. And then you'll 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 intimately know your gear, and that's what photography is: know where your boundaries are, what your limits are. All right. So if I've helped you, please throw me a like. Consider subscribing for crying out loud if you haven't already. All right. And let's grow together. Thank you.